One of the options of the FireTech system is adding the capability of a physical two-wire network. On this FTH48FX module, it has two connections for banana plugs. And those are used to create a two-wire network. And when you have a two-wire network, the screen on the modules and the remote shows a solid line between these two icons. Now this simple diagram here shows an example of a two-wire circuit for the FireTech system. Now this is based off of a high-speed CAN bus, CAN being a controller area network. And one of the key things, especially on long runs, is that you need to add a 120 ohm resistor at either end of the bus, as shown here in this diagram. The 120 ohm resistors prevent signals from being reflected off each end of the bus, causing interference. In more practical terms, that circuit looks something like this. And that's what I have represented here on the table. And on either end of the bus here, I have created these harnesses for the terminations of the bus that have an integrated resistor. And then I can plug this into the FireTech module and use different wire runs depending on what I have. Now this harness here that is not at the end of the bus does not have an integrated resistor. But at the end of the bus and the beginning of the bus from the remote, both of those include a 120 ohm resistor. My first attempt was on this here. I just took a spool of scab wire that I had and I used these cheaper banana plugs but I also soldered a resistor in between the two wires at either end of this spool. These banana plugs are cheap and terrible. I would not recommend them. But this worked here. This was about 150-200 feet of scab wire and I was able to create a network with it. Now high-speed CAN bus does recommend using a twisted pair and even shielded. Now this wire here is a 500 feet. This is a twisted pair and this aluminum foil here provides a shield. And that certainly works. I was able to just off the spool there connect and make a network with the 500 feet of cable. So the diagram of a twisted pair looks something like this here, and it just kind of zigzags between the high and the low, representing a twisted pair. In a practical term, it looks something like that. It's just, not, it's just simply the wires are twisted around each other. But after not liking those banana plugs, I went on to Amazon, you can get these probably anywhere, and got some nicer ones here. And again, these aren't very expensive. Picked up a bag of resistors. Now I found these lever nuts that nest together that I thought were pretty clever. I haven't used these before and made these harnesses here. But I had about 250 feet of just 16 gauge speaker wire on that spool here that I have laid out for a demonstration I'll show after this. And that's this cable here. It's not shielded, it's not twisted, and it worked just fine. And you'll see that in the demonstration right after this. So let me clean this off. We'll go get things set up and then we'll, we'll run the video for the demonstration. Okay, here's our two wire demonstration. What we have here is the FTM 99S remote with the two wire option. I've got my termination harness connected. It's got a 120 ohm resistor in it. 
what we're going to do is turn on the remote here. It's going to go into the create network state. Now this has a program loaded into it for four modules. We just have this connected to one module right now. Now I'm in a metal building. We're gonna follow the wire here to the container and go turn on the module so that it can connect to the two wire network. All right, here we go. And go out the shop here. Okay, we've got the wire already run into the container. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on this camera here. We'll leave this camera here running. I'll fire up the module. And it should connect via a two-wire connector. All right, it's connected. It's showing the two wire connection there. We've got one rail plugged in for rail one. And we'll go back to the shop and check our remote. Okay, we're back at the remote. We've powered up the module. You can see it says slave one. Now again, this has a program loaded into it looking for four modules. We've only connected one module for this demo. We can look at that module. Now this is the module here. It's ID4. It has a script loaded into it. I'm going to run back out to the container and plug in a test bulb so that we can see the bi-directional communication via the two wire. Okay, we're back here, and we can see the bi-directional communication continues to work on the two-wire. The X here in the upper left indicates that we have no wireless connection. The two modules with a solid wire between them shows that we have a two-wire connection. This is also providing the battery status of ID4. We're looking at the information fed back from module 4 that's in the container. Alright, so we can go back to the test screen on the remote. A long hold. We'll put this into ARM. It's telling us that it's ready to fire. Now we can start the script. You should see the module in the container go into play as well. Right, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. 
All right, and I can go ahead and continue. All right, so it finished that first portion of the script. I'm gonna go ahead and pause. The other thing we could do is we can manually fire. So go ahead and put this in play and we can manually fire. Go ahead and hit one, two, and three as well. All right, we'll go ahead and take this back to pause and back to test and uh, we'll shut this all down.